Welcome back to the Tour de France and to the page. Appreciate you being here. Happy uh, Bastille Day to you. So you can see Vive I... Vive la France. <laughs> Vive la France. Vive la Tour. Um, I've already painted the uh, French national jersey today, so I figured on July 4th I painted the U.S. national jersey. All that poor Quinn Simmons crashed like a day or so later and has now had to leave the tour. It just couldn't continue. And uh, so I figured, well, if I'm gonna do that on July 4th, on July 14th, better make sure I catch the uh, French national jersey, right? You know, parody and all of that. So this is the uh, first of the Alpine stages. This is an interesting stage. In many ways, one is a brutal climb that's facing the riders in just um, about another 10 miles or so. But the only points on the stage today are the um, the top of the one climb, although they've just hit the top of another climb that isn't categorized, but it is a um, sprint stage. Sprint intermediate sprint, not a sprint stage. Obviously with a big climb for the end of the day, it's not a sprint stage. So a few have gone out, well there's a big breakaway of 20 some, and they've gone off the front. It took a long time again to get that established. This has sort of been an unusual pattern of the tour as it takes a while to get a group off the front. A lot more than normal. But it's just been a very aggressive tour. So they finally a group of, I think it's, well, had been 20, but this little climb that wasn't a climb has dispatched a couple. But as they come into this town, what is this town? The Hauteville Lompenos, L O M P E N E S. Sorry for the butchering of my French, but um, so they're going to sprint out for whatever points are on offer. And of course, none of these guys factor into the um, points jersey competition. In fact, by the time the sprinters get here, with 20, there's only oh, prizes awarded to the top 15 on the at the sprint point. So, as I said, there well now 18 in the break and two chasing. There'll be no sprint points offered today. For any of the people in the competition, seriously in the competition. I had a title for this and I forgot it. <laughs> Let me think for a second. It was a good one. Shoot. <laughs> I set up ready to paint this and then did a couple of errands before I sat into this couple little yeah, you know, I had to let the dogs out, all that. I don't know if you can hear George over there scratching away, trying to get his chair just so. Actually, it's my chair he's trying to get just so. No, it's not going to come to me. So. And the mountains right there. <laughs> so, I don't know if you can hear Bridget in the background there giving me suggestions, but on my large scale artwork, she always titles my paintings. Much more clever with the turn of phrase than I. 
In fact, all of my good ideas are hers, including painting the tour and having this YouTube channel and sharing the work on Twitter and basically every good idea is hers. I'm pretty good at making them into reality. <laughs> yes. It's one thing to have a good idea. It's another thing to be able to bring it to fruition. But there are people who get paid just to have ideas. I don't know how you do that. How do you make that happen? There it is. It's called jumping the brake. And that's exactly what Tunison is doing right here. I don't think anybody really expected, since nobody is in the points competition, I don't think anybody really, off times in a breakaway, they'll just roll through the sprint because it really doesn't matter. And ongoing cooperation is much more important than uh, even the prize money that's on offer. But uh, Tennyson decided, nah, I think I'll go for it. Why not? The team could use the extra money because that is what usually happens in a, um, a team is they'll share out the prize money, so it's not a whole lot. I mean, I'm sure would, I'd like to have 1,500 euros, but um, that's the prize on offer. And rather than it going just to Tunison, and teams do it different ways. Sometimes a, the rider who won it will get a, a share of it, a larger share, but basically it goes into the coffers of the team. Because certainly like winning a stage, it's not just the rider. This is very much a team sport. For those who haven't, don't know as much about, the, about racing. Um, I recommend the Netflix special called Tour de France Unchained. They were going for the pun there, huh? Um, which is covers it's a lot of video, it covers a couple of teams and deals with the last year's Tour de France. And it sort of tells the story about the team race aspect of the sport. which a lot of people don't get. So I recommend giving it a watch. So I'm just now, as you can see, I've been working warm to cool, light to dark. So I'm gonna now make my black as I've said many times before, so it's a deep purple mixed with a deep blue green. And you can see how that's a much more chromatic color. And then this piece, you can see that like introducing a diagonal into your image, like this would not be as interesting if 
this diagonal wasn't here. And I always find the uh, street markings, particularly on helicopter shots, but often they become a really nice um, accent directional element to the painting. It helps enliven the painting a bit. And the other useful tool, if it's a sunny day, is a shadow on the road surface. It helps define the um, image a little better. Gives a little more visual impact as well, particularly in the helicopter shots. So I'm noticing here now, I've got a dirty brush from just doing this dark, but I need to put more yellow in there and a goldy orange tone there. So make sure you clean your brush out well before you go back. So I think we'll do the gold tone first. And then come back because now I know that my brush is clean. And now I can get the rest of that yellow in there. So the last two things to do are the little, the underside of the bib numbers. Sorry, I'm stopping Muno you know X. So, this is 200 and something. 203 is this rider. So, this is Antheon Charming. Happy to see him. So, I do play the um, Fantasy Tour, and he's actually on my team. And there's Pippin, putting in his two cents. Sure that somebody walking up the street is going to bar barge into the house and kill us all. It's our dog. <laughs> and the other dog will eat you. He's so Yeah, he really doesn't care about people. He cares about dogs. How dare they walk up his street? He has some issues about other dogs. <laughs> So now I'm just laying in, and you can see that I'm really sort of floating the color. And then while it's still wet, I can pick it up and move it. But even in that, I'm following the, um, the diagonal that's created in the road, just so that if there are any brush strokes still visible, they reinforce the directional nature of the piece. In fact, I'm going to let them appear. So see how that's there. All right, so that's that piece. Obviously, I didn't do the whole, you know, please give it a follow, subscribe, and also all of the artwork from the tour. Now, I only air one of these, as I said before, I only air one of these per day, per stage, but I paint multiple. Yesterday, I ended up painting nine paintings of that stage just because it was so... Um, aggressive and unpredictable, I kept trying to, oh, well, this is going to be the move, so I'll paint that. And then that would get caught, and then somebody else would go, and so over and over. So I ended up painting quite a few pieces. But, um, and you can see all of those at my blog and read about them, theartofcycling.blogspot.com. There you'll find a direct link to my website, gregleach.com, where you can purchase these paintings. Um, they all sell it. $95 a piece plus shipping, additional shipping for overseas, not in the US or Canada. And um, thanks for taking the time to watch. And move quickly if you want one because they do tell, tend to sell quickly. So thank you all so much. Appreciate you watching.